60 Minutes Rewind. Two days ago, Robert Sanchez resigned as Archbishop of New Mexico. That resignation was prompted by the story you're about to see. Robert Sanchez had gone from local priest to local hero 19 years ago, when he became America's first Hispanic Archbishop. But lately he's been under attack, charged with being aware that his priests have been sexually abusing children and doing nothing to stop them. Marlena Debray Nowak says she complained to the Archbishop three times that her 10 and 12 year old sons, Tom and Mark, were being fondled by Father Arthur Perot. That was 17 years ago. Nonetheless, over the years, the Archbishop promoted Father Perot to head the largest parish in the state. But last fall, an avalanche of lawsuits hit the New Mexico courts, charging numerous priests there with child abuse. The lawsuits include allegations that Father Perot abused at least six more children after Marlena de Bray Nowak had reported him to the Archbishop. The tragedy of it is, sir, that we did not know until recently that this didn't happen two or three times. This happened 25 or 30 times, sir, in my home. Sometimes when we were, my husband and I were in the house. Oh, it wasn't just one or... Oh, no, sir. But my son, Tom, did not tell me this until he was 29 years old, and I thought I'd fall out of my chair. They protected them, sir. They protected the priest because he was a priest. And when you ask why, you ask these children, why did you do this, even when they're adults? Because he was a priest. Because the nuns taught us in catechism that we mustn't say anything bad about the priest, we'd go to hell. Because he represented God. That's what makes this crime so despicable. Do you hold the archbishop responsible for all of this? A hundred percent. The buck stops at his desk. He is the honcho, the boss. And his job is to protect the children, among other things. The church itself estimates that more than a hundred children were abused by about 20 priests. Attorney Bruce Pasternak, who represents the victims, alleges several hundred children were probably molested. Parents have come to us and told us that they personally met with the Archbishop and complained that their children had been sexually molested by priests. Letters in the files reflect that the Archbishop was warned by other bishops, by psychologists, by people in the community, in the down Catholic the community, all down the years, he continued to receive those warnings and did not stop the pedophilia, I'm afraid. Why do you think <coughs> there has been apparently so much of this in the New Mexico Archdiocese? New Mexico became a center for the accumulation of the world's pedophile priests. Wow. Servants, of the, servants of the Paraclete, a facility uh, operated by a small order of priests, was started here in 1947. And over time, it became the place where pedophiles from all over the world were sent. Paraclete House tries to rehabilitate pedophile priests. Over the years, many of the priests who came here went to work in the Archdiocese in New Mexico when their treatment ended. Are children still being abused by priests today in this area? As recently as four months ago, a priest in northern New Mexico was criminally arrested and indicted for having molested a child. We have no reason to believe that this conduct has stopped. Tim Martinez recently revealed that when he was just 14, Father Jason Siegler seduced him into having oral sex. It's going to be hard for someone to understand this that's non-Catholic first. That the esteem and the, the pedestal that you put a priest on, I don't think you question it. I think it's just something that you just go along with. Tim says he had sex with Father Siegler for six years. During that time, Siegler was treated for pedophilia at Paraclete House but he would get weekend passes and have sex with Tim. Witnesses say they told the Archbishop about Siegler's pedophilia, but the Archbishop didn't stop the priest. Well, eventually he was released from Paraclete House. Um, yes. And then? Um, at that time, then he went to St. Therese, um, which is a church here in Albuquerque. Yes, and his duties were? I couldn't believe this. One of them was to be in charge of altar boys, to supervise them. Did you say in charge of altar boys? Yes. The way the church approached the whole situation of pedophilia was that all you have to do is pray about it and everything will be okay. 
But it wasn't okay for the altar boys at St. Therese, many of whom, according to the lawsuits, were molested by Father Siegler. Other priests molested girls. Susan Sandoval says that she was 15 and working in a church office when the archbishop's close friend, Father Robert Kirsch, forced himself on her and took her virginity. A little girl, a baby. I look at the pictures now and it's, you know, a little girl. And then the affair went on after that? Yes. For how long? Till I was over the age of 18. For three years? Yes. Do you have any doubt that the Archbishop knew what was going on between you and Father Kirsch? No doubt in my mind Why? whatsoever. Why? Well, uh, Father Kirsch introduced me to the Archbishop on several occasions. Um, Father Kirsch had had a situation where his prior sexual uh, improprieties were reported to the diocesan office. Here? Yes. And Susan says when she was 16, she told the youth director for the archdiocese that she was having sex with Father Kirsch. She says the youth director, who worked closely with the archbishop, wasn't surprised and indicated it wasn't a problem. Apparently the caller puts them above the law. If you did it, if I did it, if we molested children, it's criminal, isn't it? Father, I want to read you some things that have been said about We found you. Father Kirsch on a 10-mile pilgrimage. At first, another priest tried to keep us away from him. Father Kirsch, I want to read you what Susan Sandoval says about you. She was 15 years old in 1974 when she took a nap one day on a cot in the office and she woke up with Father Robert Kirsch's tongue in her mouth. Not true. Kirsch was her parish priest in a small New Mexico town you guys are in a nasty. small New Mexico town, she lost her virginity that day. Now, why would she say that about you, Father Kirsch, if it were not so? Why would she say that about you, Father Kirsch? You no, say it's not no, true. Absolutely. Why do you think Susan Sandoval would say that? Because Bruce passed and I told her to say it. Because her attorney or the family's attorney told her to say that. Right. She, he made it up for her. Correct. But Father Kirsch, in a court deposition, had already admitted that he did have intercourse with Susan Sandoval. Still, he said, that didn't violate his vow of chastity because when he had sex with her, there was no passion. The story will continue after this. A priest who has worked with the Archbishop here in New Mexico for 18 years has told us he has confirmed that since the 1970s, Sanchez has known about priests molesting children here. But this priest told us that the Archbishop's top priority has been to preserve and protect the church's image, not his parishioners' children. And so, this priest said, the Archbishop has simply refused to stop the pedophilia or even to warn parents about it. Finally, jolted by the lawsuits, the Catholic Church sent Father Ron Wolf to New Mexico last September. Father Wolf says his job is to clean up the mess. I mean, shouldn't the Archbishop have stopped the molesting of children by priests years ago. He's been Archbishop here since 1974, no? That's right. And the, the point is, Mike, as I look at it, that the nature of pedophilia was not that well known in terms of what was involved with it from a psychological standpoint. Number two, pedophiles were being treated, oh, just treated by psychologists. The nature of pedophilia is that somebody, an adult, is preying upon a child for right. sexual... Let me put it to you this way, the nature and the treatment. Ah. Huh. And yet, over the years, the Archbishop knew perfectly well that pedophilia was going on in this archdiocese and never, never moved to do it, to stop it, See, to, my to inveigh against it publicly, to, to tell his priests, to... I, I'm, I confess to you, I don't understand why? I don't have all the answers as I sit here, Mike. I'd be a liar if I did. Mm -hmm. You will agree that it is a stain upon the reputation of the Archdiocese of New Mexico. Mike, there's no question about this. This, I, even my brother priests don't like me to use the term, it's the mark of Cain. It's a mark, it's a blemish on the priesthood. But it turns out there's even more. It turns out that the Archbishop despite his vow of celibacy, has been sexually active himself. 
Now, three women are breaking a silence that has lasted almost half their lives to say that Archbishop Robert Sanchez took sexual advantage of them soon after he became Archbishop. They say they're coming forward now to stop the child abuse. We spoke first with Judy Maloof. Part of the way that he seduced me was through using um, spiritual language and my, my religiosity. At the time, I was a very devout Catholic. I think he exploited my spirituality by comparing me at times with powerful religious icons like the Virgin of Guadalupe. And then he took your virginity. <laughs> that wasn't all he took. I mean, but one of the outcomes of my affair with him was within a few months after he terminated the relationship, I lost my faith. All three women say they were very religious, innocent, and trusting. Judy was 19 when the relationship began. Kathy Mendoza and Patty Madrid were 18. The Archbishop was 40. Soon after he met them, the Archbishop took Kathy and Patty on a private camping trip. The thing that really surprised me, Mike, was that he put his sleeping bag between us. And I thought... Did hmm. you say anything to him at the time? I thought it was strange. I didn't say anything, but I thought, well, here's this very important person who I thought was next to God. He must know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. During the middle of the night, he assaulted me. What do you mean? He put his hand in my sleeping bag and, and fondled my breasts. I mean, suddenly you realize that the archbishop... Yeah. I was very naive, very naive, and I had no idea what was going on, what to do, what to say. Should I say anything? What did you say? Nothing. You just let him... I, I was scared. I was caress really scared. You. Were you aware of the fact that this was going on? I wasn't aware of that was happening to Kathy. And for my part, um, the only thing I remember is that he did roll over and he did kiss me. Kathy and Patty say, though they did not have intercourse with the Archbishop, over the years he would kiss and fondle and caress them. Once when the Archbishop was caressing you, he said to you, if only your father knew what he was missing? Mm -hmm. As I look back on the abuse for me, I think it did take on an incestual um, whatever because um, that's how he presented himself to me as a father figure. I'm sure that you've heard this, that the archbishop was reluctant to act because he had participated in sexual abuse himself. I, no question then, if that's what they say, Mike, eyeball to eyeball with you, I tell them put up or shut up. Come on in here, just don't go behind his back talking. If you've got the proof, give it to me. Let me do that right this instant. Great. You know the Maloof family. I sure do. I know. A distinguished family, a wealthy family, pillars of the community. No question about it. All right. Let me play for you what Judy Maloof told us. Good. I think he exploited my spirituality by comparing me at times with powerful religious icons like the Virgin of Guadalupe. And then he took your virginity. <sighs> that wasn't all he took. I mean, but one of the outcomes of my affair with him was, I lost my faith. Judy Maloof, daughter of that family, charging the archbishop, took her virginity and took her faith. You asked that somebody put up or shut up. Fair enough. Mike, in the papers, on television, I have said, victims come to talk to me. She never showed up. When Archbishop Sanchez heard that Judy Malouf and Kathy Mendoza and Patty Madrid had talked to us, he only admitted having had relationships with them. But Father Wolf went further, saying he believes the relationships were sexual. And last Friday, Father Wolf called the Archbishop's resignation an admission of guilt and acknowledged that he resigned because of these public allegations. Other women, too, told us they had sexual relationships with the Archbishop, one woman even claims that she was raped by Robert Sanchez back in 1973 and that when she finally confronted him about it two years ago, the Archbishop gave her $25,000 to pay for the therapy she needed after the alleged rape and to keep her quiet. A footnote, bishops all across the country have either ignored or protected priests who abuse children, according to Jason Berry, author of the book Lead Us Not Into Temptation. Berry says that for years, many bishops have been moving pedophile priests from parish to parish without warning parishioners. 